Oh hey, what's happening there YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housemade and today we are going to be going over a question we get pretty much every day and that is what is the difference between the grooved contact wheel and the solid contact wheel that we sell at housemade.us and a bunch of other grinder manufacturers make and sell these as well. And this is a question that I don't really have an full-on answer at the time I'm recording this intro right now. I don't really know the difference other than that I believe that this, the grooved wheel is a bit softer than the hard wheel, okay? And that's just physics because, you know, there's grooves in this, so there's a little give in the rubber. The rubber is identical, same hardness level in the rubber. We use the exact same rubber on them all. But the grooves have a tendency to give a little bit more. But what does that mean exactly? Especially in the knife making world, which is a, where a bunch of you guys are using the Revolution 2x72. And by the way, if you're interested in building a 2x72 belt grinder, make sure you check out the Revolution on my website, housemade.us. That is where you can find pieces, parts, and plans to build a heavy duty industrial machine like the Revolution. In my opinion, every workshop should have a 2x72 belt grinder in it, regardless of the brand. But the Revolution, in my opinion, third of the cost of all the other manufactured brands and usually ships right away. We are in stock all the time. We make that a priority here at Housemade. That said, you have a lot of options now. With the Gen 5, you actually can go with a four inch contact wheel on the D-plate. I feel like that was a great addition. That was a suggestion from my buddy Pickle Cutters, uh, Nick Tobin in Canada. He had mentioned that he would like to see that on the Revolution. We added it to the Gen 5 about a year ago. And ever since, it has been a very popular option. And 90% of the orders that we get for that grinder, they go with the uh, contact wheel. But the question has always been, which one is better, the grooved wheel or the, or the hard wheel? It just really depends on what you're doing with the machine. Now. I will say from a knife maker's perspective, I had a long conversation with Brent about this and he has been using the groove contact wheel in his workshop for a long time, but he notices the difference between the hardness and the softness. He'll see slight differences like the belt can round over a spine on a knife. And if, in the case of, let's say, say you don't want that, and you really want more of a crisp edge, the solid wheel is really the way to go. So like for more precise work, the things you're doing that need to be flatter, or I guess like for deburring and things like that too, the hard wheel works great. But for a softer touch, the grooved wheel really shines because you can actually, you know, smush the belt slightly into the work and get a nice uh, rounded over look if you want that. So today we're going to run a couple of tests. Brent is going to bring in some knives that he's been working on. They're at that particular stage where he needs to clean up the spine. And we're going to do some very fine testing on that. And we're just going to put a couple of pieces of quarter inch plate so that we can just deburr those and just see the difference and do our best to give you guys the information that you've been looking for on this subject. So, all right, let's get started. All right, so we're gonna do some real world examples here. This is some quarter inch plate with some weld spatter on it. We're gonna remove the weld spatter, then we're gonna deburr the edges a little bit. And then I've got some laser cut parts here that need a little bit of love and attention as well. So we're gonna try to remove those laser cut marks from these pieces of steel and we're gonna do that with a VSM ceramic belt and we're gonna alternate between the grooved wheel and the solid wheel. Hopefully that'll highlight some of the differences between the two wheels. Okay, so it relatively quickly and easily removed the weld spatter from this quarter inch plate, not a problem. Um, one of the things I did notice was a little bit of rounding over when I was running the edge just like this across. Um, I did get a little bit of bounce, uh, which created a few grooves. Um, I was e able to easily remove those grooves by moving over to the flat plat, and that was not a problem. Um, I also managed to put a chamfer in around this uh, on this one corner just to see how that went. It looks pretty smooth. I don't see any uh, variation in that at all. So let's try the solid wheel. Okay, so a couple of things I noticed right off the bat. With the solid wheel, I felt like I had more control. Like I was just simply able to make this edge flat, 
without uh, pushing too far into the wheel itself. I didn't need to do as many passes. Granted, this piece didn't have as much weld spatter on it, so that probably had something to do with it. But then when I went ahead and ran the chamfer here on the corner of this, you can see it's pretty clear. It's nice and smooth, and that was just two passes on that. So in this application, I think the solid wheel wins because of control. More than anything else, I felt like I had more control with the solid wheel. Okay, so now we got a laser cut part here that we are going to just soften the edges and also remove the laser marks from this edge here and remove this little pierce point and run this both on the solid and grooved wheel. So what I'm noticing too is with this process the exact same thing that the solid wheel I feel like I have a lot more control and that I'm able to very gently remove the edges from this and deburr it. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the grooved wheel and see if I have that same amount of control. Okay, so here's the result with the grooved wheel. Um, the, I feel like the work looks the same. There's not a lot of difference between the, the two pieces. But what I did feel like with the grooved wheel, I felt like I had to make more passes because it is softer. In this case, side by side, I can really feel the difference. Um, you know, working with, you can see them here, they, they, they literally look identical. You can't tell a difference. Um, but working with the two different wheels now in this capacity, I can definitely feel that this is much softer and that if I did not, if I was not mindful of that, that I could round things over like round edges over and things that maybe I didn't want to. Now, if you are used to using the grooved wheel, you can compensate for that and still make it flat because you have a flat platen, you're able to do that. Um, but yeah, I'm starting to, in my opinion, starting to lean more towards the solid wheel for this type of work, deburring, uh, removing marks and things like that. Things that I want more control and more flat. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing using both the grooved and the solid contact wheels, I'm gonna be doing two things. One, this is a water jet blank, so there is a little bit of unevenness in the profile. And two, I've just rough cut these handles. So I'm gonna be cleaning up the spine of that water jet blank while I'm fitting this handle to this knife. If I get a little closer here, you can see this handle is rough shaped. You can also see there is an angle on this blade from that water jet cut. I will be using a grooved contact wheel to clean up the top of this blade on the spine. And then I'll be switching over to the small wheel attachment that we've developed here at Housemade, the tight turn, because that has solid wheels with that. Also, I'm gonna be using the four inch solid contact wheel for this bottom piece. And we'll see, is there a difference between the top and the bottom on how this cleans up? Okay, so I wanted to get Brent on camera here and have a candid conversation about this from a knife maker's perspective, because you do a lot of this work and you don't just do it here, you do it at your house and in your own workshop yep. and you've used pretty much every iteration of this wheel from 10 inch, 14 inch, solid, grooved, Give me the elevator pitch on which one you would prefer or what the differences are. So ultimately, the one I prefer to use is the grooved wheel because I use that more often, so I'm more comfortable with it. Um, in doing both the solid and the grooved wheel, I did notice um, a little bit of heat buildup, not anything that can't be dealt with by going slow. As you can see, if you've worked with Rich Light, you know it burns really easily. And this really was not burning at all. So I was able to manage that. However, it did feel a little cooler grinding on the grooved wheel. Um, but that also could have been because I had a fresh belt on there at that point. And after grinding on the grooved wheel, I did that. Um, so short answer of which one I prefer, I'm used to the grooved wheel. So I do like the grooved wheel. Do you feel like the grooved wheel is more versatile? Um, I feel like they're both versatile. This is a, there's like, this is like a hair difference. And um, 
I really didn't feel much difference. And looking at the end result, they're both the same. They, they turned out identical. Top to bottom of that knife turned out identical. So just looking at this from an outsider standpoint, if I was to walk up to this blade and, and knowing that, I would say there's zero difference. Um, so it's a really tough call. It really comes down to personal preference uh, for each person's use. I do see the solid wheels being a harder wheel. And if you're gonna really be hogging away material, I could see that coming in and benefiting greatly from that, being able to put a lot more pressure and have that wheel not wear down so quick. So I think what you're trying to say is there's subtle differences. And once you have used them both, you kind of tend to lean towards one, but you could make the grooved wheel do what the solid wheel does and right. you could make vice versa, right? So in my opinion, I prefer because I'm not, I do make knives, but I don't do it to the level you're doing. You're doing production work and I'm doing it as a hobby. I prefer the solid wheel and that's because I'm using it for all kinds of things. Like if I'm cutting something out on the plasma table, I need to deburr something or remove something. I just feel more comfortable pushing hard into a solid wheel. Right. The end result though, you're probably right. It's probably the same and it's very, very subtle, a very subtle difference that you probably wouldn't notice over time. So there you have it guys. I mean, really ultimately this is what we've been kind of thinking the whole time was that there's just subtle differences and it's up to you on which one you prefer. The difference though too, one of the things you did bring up though was the cooling difference between the groove and the solid wheel because those grooves are in there. There's a little bit more air movement that flows through the rubber and yeah. the belt. That can be an advantage when you're yes. working with things that are, uh, that can get hot fast and things that burn like rich light because that's a paper composite that's made with epoxy and that will burn like wood so you know uh the answer to this question i think is what are you doing with the machine where are you going to go with it and which one are you going to do more of and then ultimately honestly i don't think it matters much do you i don't either there's your non-answer. <laughs> so anyway, we appreciate you guys following along with Housemade and supporting our work and our business. It means the world to us. It supports all of our families here at Housemade. We have done amazing things because of you and that's the important part. So we truly appreciate you supporting our work, even if it's just liking, commenting, subscribing, all those things, it just makes the world a difference to us. So remember, if you want to build the best two by 72 belt grinder on the market, make sure you go to housemade.us, find pieces, parts, and plans for that project, and so many more like the Apollo Project too. And uh, we hope to see you guys on the next video. My name is Brian House. And I'm Brent. And this has been Housemade. <laughs> Woo! Real quick, I know I'm gonna get a million questions about this. These are indexing pins that our buddy Kyle Daly from KH Daily Knives makes. They're fantastic, they're hardened, and then he puts these little micarta grab pins on them so you can insert them into your knives and it creates like a great bond between your handle and your blade material. And then when you're done, so go check out Kyle's stuff on Instagram, KH Daily Knives, or you can go to his website, khdailyknives.com. The only problem I have with this design is that I didn't think of it. <laughs> Meow, 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 meow,